in search of the behind the chair millionaire, uh, we've we've we found we found uh, our that's not only on the path, but she uh, you know she would say with the uh, humility and gratitude across the Rubicon. She's uh, I would call it best practices of uh, those that are uh, quietly, silently, discreetly uh, becoming millionaire stylists to just show how possible it is. It's so probably possible that it almost insults your intelligence. Very, very easy to do. Not, I beg your pardon, very simple to do. Not easy because there's a lot of some things, for some of us, we have to unlearn some old patterns of behavior that tend to thwart or throw us off that path. And we'll have the conversation tonight with Julie about it. She knows. And some other little, I don't want to call them landmines, but, uh, you know, a little bumps in the road, potholes that you have to navigate around. Because, uh, you know, the, 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 the people that are on this path and get over that finish line are, you know, extreme exceptions to the rule. So this is not a, a secret conversation, but it's sacred. It's not secret, but it's personal. So it's something that, uh, so I hope you have your uh, ultrasound hearing aids on tonight. Um, this is her, this is her stats as it relates to on the path to becoming a, we'll call it uh, a hairdresser with a seven figure net worth. If you count the number of numbers that are in a million dollars or more, you'll find that there's seven of them. So. Uh, you can see since 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, her income, she looks like she listed that behind the chair. Uh, she just wanted her behind the chair income. She also wears a summit. Uh, she's a Jedi associate trainer. She's a, a hair Jedi behind the chair. You'll see that she's a Jedi on how she handles her money, how you handle money is how you handle her life. So she 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 understands that. You can see her track record as it relates to um, lowering debt. You, you, you can't get to the promised land unless you're spending less than you make and using some of that to lower debt. And then taking some of it as well and saving. So she's been a saver of money, an investor of money, an investor in some other little things. And through that, uh, when we were preparing for this interview, she just flipped into 40 something. So she's on the back end of 30s, on the very front end of 40 something. And she's over the seven figure um, Rubicon. So I'm going to get her talking about that tonight, you guys. So she's in my uh, green room now. I'm going to go get her. And, and I, want to, I want her to share her experience in getting there. And then I, I'm just looking forward to the conversation. So bear with me as I. Uh, do my uh, geek thing here. She's there. I'm going to unmute her so we can hear her. And you're going to make her feel nice, warm, and comfortable for this. <laughs> hello, my friend. Hello, hello. Thank you for, uh, I know you're in the salon. So that means that you either work today in the salon or you came today to do the interview in the salon. What? Both. That's what I thought. I thought I th you and I were texting back and forth and it, it looked like and sounded like by your text that you were busy, busy in the salon and you're out in the world and you're online doing, you know, tutoring people on working with an associate. And, and now this is special conversation. So thank you for uh, agreeing to give us some time and engaging us in this uh, discussion. Oh, yes. Anything for you, Michael. <laughs> it, I told she's good. Isn't she good? You guys, she, she knows that. <laughs> how to uh, talk, talk to old guys like me. <laughs> so Julie, um, I want to really, you know, if people, this is your either second or third encore. I know that you and I've done a few lives over the years. I had you on for your very first live, live. correct me if I'm wrong, but it's got to be at least three, four years ago. You remember? Yeah, I think it was about three years ago, right when I started with Summit. Yeah. And, um, then it was with the, the entire conversation was behind the chair. And then I had you on when you kind of on ramped the associate training, which had, and now you're back because unbeknownst to me, you have been on this path of becoming as financially secure and prosperous 
as you are in, in, in developing a livelihood. And, uh, and I said, oh, my God, Julie, I thought I knew you. You've been, <laughs> you've been holding out on me. And it was like, no, no, I'm just quiet and silent and discreet about that uh, because, uh, because. So when, when did you flip? From I, I call it the um, kind of ordinary, I handle my money like everything else, everybody else too. I really want to get more intentional in securing wealth and prosperity for myself. Do you remember when that happened? Yeah, it happened about, I would say about five, six years ago. I um, Closer to 10 years ago, I heard Peter Mahoney give a speech and he said, who has a five-year plan? And I was like, I have a five-year plan. And he was, said, do you know the end date for that plan? When is five years? When is that goal date? And I had all these plans, but I never put a true end date to when I wanted to accomplish them. So while I was in that room, I made a five-year plan. I put a date on that plan. And sure enough, five years later, I was able to achieve the goal that I set in that room that day. Well, so five years, I'm doing the math, Julie, you're, you're on the very front end of 40 something now. So that would have put you at 36 ish, give or take. Am I, am yeah. I right? So at 36, yeah. you were kind of on, you know, you were on a path, but it wasn't formalized. And so when you say a plan, it was a plan to really uh, not only develop security and wealth, but let's say uh, attain uh, a worth and net worth of seven figures. Is that what you're uh, referring to? Originally, the plan was just to own a beach house. Ah, so at first is I want to, in addition to my home, I want to own a beach house. And so you, what, what did that mean you were going to need to do uh, behind the chair or whatever as it relates to your money life to be able to make that dream come true? I had to pay down a significant amount of debt. I spent a lot of my 20s spending about 120% of my income. So I made a lot of poor financial decisions. So I spent those five years paying down all of my debt and saving up for a down payment on a beach condo. I was able to purchase it and rent it out at a surplus. So it was in the black right away. So, boy, there's a whole lot that what you said there that I want to unpack. So in your 20s, your spending was 120 percent of your income. And we know that we we pay for that difference through some sort of credit cards or finance or something. So at the back end of your 20s, you have some personal debt that you had to put inside of that plan. I, if I'm gonna make this dream a reality, I've got this giant turd in the punch bowl that I need to clean up. Oh, absolutely. Um, what, what May I ask, <laughs> where, where what was the number on that? Was it five figures, six figures? Like where, where did it live? Oh, it was, it was in the five figures, the mid five figures. Okay, so that's substantial. I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. So, Inside of the five-year win plan, you cleaned that up, saved, in addition to that, saved enough money for a down payment on a, quote, beach house. And it sounds like you sold that house. We did sell that house. Um, we kept it for a year and a half. We sold it at um, a $30,000 profit and rolled that money over into our next beach property. Great. So all of a sudden... That you learn something that whoa okay you know I mean on in the on, on TV they call that flipping houses so all of a sudden you went oh so that's what but the the bigger point is is that as you're achieving this you're building your net worth yes yes and then it Absolutely. sounded like in addition to that and I don't want to be presumptuous like that was a way that you were building but you were also sounds like tucking away money because that's the other way that we get there is we you know we're able to take money put it somewhere uh long term so that the money starts making money on the money what did you have that oh, as well i did but i didn't start it until about two and a half years ago i started saving a portion of what i mean it started off small and now um i'm saving about a thousand dollars a month into an ira 
All right, so so you put a grand, which is about 12 a year, inside of an IRA, mm -hmm. which is kind of a longer term saving and investment that gets uh, a, a higher annual return than if you took that same money and put it in a passbook saving at one or two percent. And then in addition yes. to that, you're now you have another stream of revenue called uh, property that you've you've got some stuff going on in your properties. And no, mm -hmm. wait, there's more that I showed your income tonight behind the chair. But in addition to that, you have income as a coach. Uh, you're, you're yes. you know, a Jedi associate trainer. So you put all this stuff together. When you and I did the math, I, I kind of fell off the back of my chair because I said, Julie, am I, what am I getting wrong here? Because it looks like you're not on this path. You've crossed the Rubicon and you're now in over the seven figure and you're continuing to move and you're only 40 something. Yes. So wh what's that kind of like, what's that like as you like, as you listen to this, as you kind of look at the data of what you've been, your plan, you, you because once upon a time you went this, you said, gee, in my twenties, I was, uh, <laughs> I was the opposite of this. I was like your typical. And now your, that change, that pivot, is uh, diametrically opposite. What's that feel like when you hear this? Honestly, I pretend like it doesn't exist. I live like I don't have it. I want to retire early and enjoy the rest of my life. My parents worked really hard their whole lives and I don't wanna do that. I wanna do what I wanna do on the tail end of my life. I really enjoy what I do now, but I want to, you know, be able to pick and choose later on. So I just act and live like we don't even have it. Right. So it's one of those, if I don't look at it and don't see it, I don't uh, think about it. I don't miss it because you're, you're now diverting money to your future. You're investing in yourself. Um, but making an investment in yourself by investing in your future in a way so that you can, as you call it, retire early or at least have the uh option a bible that if i choose to retire early i don't have to do the math i know that it's just there for me yeah absolutely i uh i like the idea of not working but i also don't know how to do that so it's like the plan but <laughs> see how that goes yeah it, guilty as charged your honor i mean it takes one to know one um and it's just interesting that, you know, I've, I've got, uh, you know, uh, a couple of decades on on the path that you're on. And now it's really um, it's where our this thing that we used to call our livelihood becomes as much of a vocational calling as it does. Boy, this is a means through which I use to support myself and my family. So that's a whole different um, consciousness. Oh, absolutely. And I use that word vocational a lot. I truly believe that I um, give back not only in the salon company that I own, but through consulting and coaching with Summit, I give back to our industry. And it really means a lot to me to make a change in our industry and show stylists that are in the industry how you can do better and you don't have to just be a hairstylist. You know, you can right. be an entrepreneur, you can be an investor, you, there is no glass ceiling. You can really do whatever you want. I think that's one of the most shocking things to not only people in the business that, but people that are not part of the business that are kind of predisposed of, I mean, you hear it all the time, you know, the beauty school dropout, the, you know, and it's like, but it, what I, if there was a secret, and it's getting out is that you can that behind the chair, in addition to you can you can be at least equal to and greater than people with that are degree, whether we're talking four year, six year degrees. And in a lot of cases, you know, people that have a doctorate. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And then you to come out of it with a fraction of the debt that you would come out 
going to, you know, a six year program or an eight year program or going through a residency, you know, able to pay off your student loan very quickly. I was able to do it in my first year, completely pay down my student loan. Right, right. So there's a couple of the questions I wanted to ask you. We were chatting a little bit about it. You've been on the path formally, intentionally for about five years. But as somebody that's been on the path, myself, and pe- talking to people like you that have been on the path, when you're first on it, it looks different than when you've been on it even a little while. So you, you, you start it because people say that you should, but it doesn't make, it's like, how could putting away a little bit of money every day over time make me rich and terribly happy? It's like you you don't get it. And then all of a sudden you go, well, I'll do it. I don't need to get it. I'm just going to do it. But at some point, I call it, you kind of weigh in. You look at your stuff and you go, oh, my God. The, the, now I know what they were talking about. Have you had that experience? And if so, how long were you on the path before you had it? I think that... So I would say that I got to that, oh my God, portion about a year and a half ago. Uh, The money was saving up, but around a year and a half ago, I um, bought a second beach house. Uh, I bought into the salon company, Sheer Art, that I work for. And it was definitely a big sacrifice to do that. We already had one rental property in the home we were living in. I have three small children. So that's why you see that one year on my list of income where I didn't save anything at all. We had no liquid assets, but by the end of that year, you know, I was getting dividend checks. We were making a significant income through Airbnb on our rental properties. And I was just stockpiling it all away, acting like it didn't exist. And when I saw that statement come in from my financial advisor, I it's like, oh, well, yeah, it, it kind of blows the sides off your brain box. But then at some point you go, so this is what my teachers were pointing to it. But you can't see it until you begin to be it. It's like, it, you oh, know, absolutely. It, it just it, it just. But if the good news is, if you get on the path, even though you can't see it and you stay on the path, Sooner or later, you start becoming it and you get data and the data blows your mind. It's like, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, so that's what they were talking about. And now it's like, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're on your own now going, okay, I'm going to see what, how far this can take me, how fast this can take me. And in a state like Florida, where you, you know, you have an opportunity um, for investments that, um, especially now you, you just kind of hit a wave and the wave takes you. Oh, absolutely. And buying property out at the beach was a great idea because it's always increasing in value. The um, second beach condo that we bought or the newest beach condo that we own, um, not only do we quadruple or more our cost every month, on what we're bringing in, but it increased in value over the last year and a half by $70,000. Yeah. And people that are listening to this, I want them, I don't want them to forget the context at in your twenties, you were in a situation that a lot of people that are behind the chair in, in their twenties that because you, you, we don't we're I call it uninformed, sometimes misinformed, you know, at 20 something, we're, we're, that's our life. And so we, we, we look back and you go, I'm, I'm spending 120% of what I'm earning and I'm funding that difference with credit or loans or whatever. So on the back end of that, I've got a situation. I'm, you know, I've, I've got personal debt. So step one, it's I got to jack up my income. I got to get my arms around my spending and I have to start nuking my debt. And then, and then having uh, begin saving money, so I have a pool of something to get into that game. And you were able to make that happen inside of a relatively short period of time. What did you say, eighteen months, give or take? Yeah, I mean that, Julie. That's 
That's amazing. And the, just this tutoring tonight would help somebody to see that as a possibility. And at the end of the conversation, say, look, don't wait to understand this intellectually. Don't wait for this. Wow. to. You have to give yourself and your teachers the benefit of the doubt and say, this, I believe that this can work for me, even though I don't understand conceptually how it's going to, right? And you take this oh. giant leap of faith. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And I teach my associates in my salon company, the associates I'm bringing up personally, all about finances, all about savings. We have some very open conversations because nobody did that with me when I was coming up in the salon or coming up in my 20s. I didn't join the salon industry until I was almost 30. And if I had known that earlier on in life or had those conversations earlier on in life, I think I would have made, or I hope I would have made some different choices, you know? Well, I, I'm convinced that a lot of why people in their 20 something, it's a function of I'm, I'm either uninformed, I know, like you said, I've never been in front of somebody to engage me in the conversation and or I'm misinformed. I, I, you know, I picked up some messages that were saying, look, this is not possible. Don't do you only live once, you know, uh, you know, so, so to enjoy yourself, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, at some point when you are open to the conversation, the, the it's some of that gets dispelled, it gets flushed out and say, OK, no, wait a minute. There, there, there's a better way of doing this. And you make the pivot. You made the pivot in your mid thirties, as I did. So I, you know, that's yeah. why I can identify so much with your story because it's like, oh my God, that that's what I that that's my story too. My hunch is it's a lot of people's story. Yes. Well, there's another piece of that I wanted to engage you in because it's a big piece, and that is especially like yourself. You 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 come from a family of origin. I'm just going to say of uh, uh, people that are pretty common with regard to this conversation. And this conversation goes way beyond it. So I come from a family of origin where, I mean, I say I was not only impoverished, but relatively speaking, profoundly impoverished. You know, my wife, she comes from that same. And as we began moving on this direction, you know, you got siblings and relatives and in-laws and outlaws and friends and homies and BFFs. They're not on this choo-choo track. And all of a sudden they start kind of sensing something is up. And it there are times where there's some awkward moments. Have have you had any of those experiences? No, but I expect them tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, I, so yeah, I, I, I've got a couple of your homies on tonight that said, uh, who was it? Uh, um, uh, wow, you got a lot of people weighing in tonight, uh, some of your buddies. So, uh, wow, man, a lot of people are weighing in tonight for you. Um, who is it? Kinsey uh, said, is it weighed in? And then, uh, one one of your uh, uh, working mates that's in the salon that was in T Spa uh, uh, on the Summit Salon Academy, Ray. It says uh, she, she all she put is whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so uh, you know more more will be revealed. Last question I want to ask you, and before I ask you for a favor, and that is. Um, as people are watching tonight, and there'll be a lot of people that'll watch the recorded version and we'll edit it and it'll live on Summit's YouTube page, et cetera. They're looking at you. They're listening to you. They're identifying with you, except they're at where you were, you know, front end of 30 something, back end of 20 something. You're at where they're not in, you know, front end of 40 something. And they're, I call it, they're at that holy jumping off place. Do I want to, do, should I make the pivot, take the leap of faith and, or not? Because there's, there's always fear there. Is there anything that you can share with them that may, might inspire them to uh, this, make this decision to get on this track? Yeah, I think that even if it's just a small amount, you should definitely save. 
I started in the beginning just saving my tips. And once that accrued, I was able to start a IRA. I think that the best advice I could really give is just to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to. Yeah. And it, as a hairdresser, if you're saying I can't afford to save money, then I would I would I would send you back and get find the dial and knob on your income, because especially today, you could you could set a goal to give yourself a ten to twenty thousand dollar personal raise, especially if you're being coached by somebody like yourself, which brings me to the last thing I want to say. I, I, I need your permission to give you a, a, a shameless plug. Um, get on Julie's Instagram page. It's Julie underscore Rubino and DM her. She is a summit uh, associate trainer and her and I chatted before the, the show. She's working with a lot of salons online. She she does. She gets in a plane to train an automobile and comes in and they have someone has this extraordinary associate training. But I she I said, so. Julie, can I tell them that if they did that, you'd, you'd, you'd come up in with a highly unique, sustainable value-added point of difference gift with purchase called Julie will share some of the, that content with your people and motivate them to uh, start um, building wealth as they're building their livelihood. Oh, absolutely. I think that that's a big portion of it. The year I took on my first associate, I was able to double my income and that really changed my life. It's not about the money. I really believe now it's about growing people around me, but the money helps, right? Oh yeah, the money is, I think the money is really the, the gift, the blessing, the fruit of it. Um, but you're, what, what you're saying is, uh, yeah, that, that the, the associate program is like, it pours nitroglycerin on the, the wealth building bonfire. Did you find a, a shift an attitude that when all of a sudden this became as much of a formal intention as building clientele and income, did you did you find find that it kind of leveled up your consciousness and it kind of even fine tuned whether you want to call it attitude, motivational juice, passion? It gave you like one more big why. Yeah, I think that um, it definitely made a difference between you know, doing extra things like saving for college for my kids and being able to do that and being able to see the money accrue in my savings accounts. It was just, um, I am a very competitive person and it was almost like I was competing with my own numbers coming in. So if I saved, you know, twelve six thousand $6,000 in my IRA one year, I wanted to better my best the next year and do 10 or 12. So it was just, you know, one of those things where I was driven by the numbers to do it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's one more, what, I wonder if I can do this. And, it, and, and you start having experiences where you're surprised by the experience that you have as you're kind of standing witness to your own achievement. You go, well, as hard as I thought that was, it, it wasn't that difficult. Heck, I'm, I'm going to turn up the juice in that and, and it, it makes your day more challenging, your life more interesting, et cetera. So um, we're out of time, but promise me two things. First, you'll come back for an encore to keep the conversation going as you build momentum. But as you know, I'm doing this uh, series for L'Oreal Salon Emotion called, uh, you know, Behind the Chair Millionaire. And I'd love to figure out, you know, in, in, in those mornings where I'm doing a two hour uh, uh, Zoominar to have you do a surprise drop-in visit to do just five minutes, 10 minutes to just show people that first of all, I'm not lying to them, making this stuff up that this is very, there's something about seeing you and seeing that, okay, I get it. He's not, this is not something that's possible. It's something that's being done. So would you make a commitment to me that uh, when you can, you'll do that? Michael, you know, my answer is always for you, the world. <laughs> Thank you, my my friend. Well, listen, I love you to the moon. Say hi to all my homies at Sheer Art. A lot of them are on tonight, giving you a lot of love. And there's uh yeah, we're I, celebrating I, uh we're celebrating 35 years in business today. Oh my god. So when they opened up, you were six. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so wonderful. Well, uh congratulate them all. Congratulate Joanne for me. That's uh that's uh 
she's uh, created quite a legacy. And um, and now you're 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 on the board and a shareholder, and so it's all good. So thank you very much, my friend. Thank you, sir. We're gonna give it up for Julie Rubino one more time, you guys. I'll be talking to you. All bye, right. Bye now. Give it up one more time, you guys. I love that interview. I just love, 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 love um, when people come on and really share their experience of walking through staying on this path because there's way more to it than meets the eye. And there, the, these were the four gems, if you will. See my hair follicle and how it gets, it's dead ended, and but it gets rich and green towards the top. This is from broke as a joke. I mean, basically she was saying in her 20s, I'm, I'm, I'm spending 120 percent of my income and I'm financing that difference with credit cards and loans. I begin to wake up uh, at, it sounded like 35, 36, she was on the receiving end of a Peter Mahoney, probably path to abundance, and it, it kind of woke up, pivoted, and now she's here. But the, the four gems that she used is you, you need to give yourself a raise. So you you need to effective now, and that's what's wonderful about being summit, being coached by a summit coach, being coached by a Julie Rubino on associate, leveling up to associate training, that you can give yourself a twenty thousand dollar a year raise. You you can go from fifty grand to seventy grand right now. You can go from forty to sixty, thirty to fifty, like, and then the next year do it again. I mean, we're just seeing too damn many hairdressers in Summit Salon doing that. So this is no longer, we just call that, you know, give yourself a raise and raise your damn income. But unless you're spending less than you make, I'm going to say that again, less than you make, you have to spend less than you make, no matter how much you make or how little you make. If you don't spend less than you make, if you don't get a handle on this, and that's what she did, she got a handle. She brought her spending from 120% of her income to 80% of her income. So she lowered her spending by 40 points. I want you to hear that again, right? Now, how did she do that? Well, partially it was jacking up her income, but she just had to get her arms around the beast. You don't, you know, you, you, you just because you have a desire to spend doesn't mean that you have to act on that desire. That difference is money left over. She nuked probably fifty to sixty thousand dollars in personal credit card debt. It sounded like inside of an eighteen month window. And in addition to that, when I say pay yourself first, she saved money enough to get a down payment on her first. Uh, investment. Now, if real estate isn't, you know, this is not about real, you know, investing in beachfront property. It's about paying yourself first. In my own life, 100% of my pay myself first went into long-term savings account. So I, I don't, you know, I, I own one piece of real estate and that's the house that I live in. So there's more, all roads lead to Rome. So what, whatever your taste in, in doing that, you can keep it simple, you can make it interesting, but that's what you do. These are the four gems that got her from, you know, wiener water soup net worth into, I'm gonna call it the land of milk and honey. So uh, give it up for uh, Julie Rubino um, one more time. So um, if you're, um, New to our, this conversation, you're on Michael Cole Summit Facebook page. We have these conversations on a regular basis. Uh, this is powered by not only the Summit Salon Business Center but and L'Oreal, but specifically L'Oreal Salon Emotions. These are their brands, and because they financially, they 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 support this conversation. This can be brought to you. Compliments of them. So thank you, L'Oreal. We all, uh, also have the opportunity, um, as of uh, Monday, we will start a brand new Zoominar series that complements 
L'Oreal Salon in Motion called the millionaire, uh, the, the behind the chair millionaire, um, uh, 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 remarkable secrets on quietly, silently, uh, discreetly becoming a millionaire stylist. So it's, it really takes a deeper dive on this. Uh, it's sold out on this one, but uh, L'Oreal will be doing a, another one soon. So stay tuned in that. You should be on uh, Summit Salon Business Center, uh, summitsalon.com. There's just a lot of resource there to get this conversation going. So um, it's been a great, great evening. Uh, thank you again, Julie Rabina. We're going to give it up for you. And um, for those of you that are signed up for uh, the millionaire, behind the chair millionaire, I will see you bright-eyed and bushy-tailed on uh, Monday morning. So have a good, uh, have a good evening.